Hello, hello, hello. We are here today and we are going to be talking all about ancestral healing with Bernadette Thompson. This is going to be so much fun. For those of you that don't know me, I am Sabrina Victoria. I am the host here at her talk show. Listen, if you have not already subscribed, now is the time. These podcasts are guaranteed to have you thinking differently about life and business. Let's jump right in. Get ready because today's guest is about to change the way you view your world. This is Her Talk Show, hosted by Sabrina Victoria. I usually have a glass of water that I that I have with me, and my glass of water is way over there. So at some point, I might just bail the seat and just get up. <laughs> All good. You have to take over for five seconds. Uh, not a problem. I, <laughs> you, I love it. For those of you that are already jumping on live, you know I love you. For those of you that are jumping on the replay, we love you too. Make sure you hashtag replay in the comments wherever you're at so we can send you some love after the show. Listen, we've had over 600 women grace this stage. We are adding another one to the list today. We have Bernadette Thompson in the house. She is the owner of Tell Me Our Story, Genealogy and Ancestral Healing, a genealogist trained in grief and trauma. She focuses on ancestral healing. She is also certified as a professional end-of-life doula, supporting those experiencing the mind, body, and spirit connections of grief. It was during the loss of her husband that her spiritual connection with her ancestors opened. Oh my gosh. What is going on? How mysterious is this opener? Well, would you like me to share a little bit? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, was this, what do you mean by this? I'm just imagining like within a week of the death, all of a sudden you're seeing ghosts in your home or something. What does this mean? Well, what it means is, well, I'll give you a little backstory. I'm a genealogist for over 15 years. So genealogy is where you look into the stories of your ancestors. You look to see who is on your family tree. And so I built to help people build their family trees and, and put on those, you know, it's like, did I come from the Mayflower? You know, am I, do my descendants, I mean, my um, ancestors. And so that's one side of it. But the spirit spiritual side of it is that we, as you start to delve into these stories, you start to connect with your ancestors. They are a part of you. They, that they're our family. So as you look back, you see the incredible stories and it resonates with you. And not only does it resonate you with you, um, it begins to bring you healing, whether you are going through a deep grieving period or you are just living what we all live, which is kind of a, you know, lives that go up and down. Um, and as you connect with the ancestors, they, um, you feel their presence, you start to open up and um, understand, or this is, this is the journey I take people on, to kind of open up and understand that um, they're spiritual beings, we are spiritual beings, and that our ancestors are there for us. And, and um, we also all, often find a connection, you know, there may be something that an ancestor did, and all of a sudden you say, I that's where I get it from. So sometimes I had one client who was very artistic. So she was asking me to look back and see if I could find any of her ancestors that had that spark of being creative. And so that is in a in a quick way, that's kind of what um the genealogy and the ancestral connection is. But when we are deeply grieving, it is a way for us to truly begin um, the healing process. So I have gone through it um, myself. I lost my husband six years ago. And unfortunately, he passed away from alcoholism. So it was a um, it was a, a difficult process for him to go through and for our family to go through. And one of the things I relied on as 
we were, you know, going through, it was about four years from when he came and told me that he was struggling to when he passed away. So it was a very compact time in terms of um, a lot of upheaval. And during that time, I was doing my ancestry. I felt very, very connected to the ancestors. And I, they helped me understand. And I looked back at their stories. And I was able to see um, the, the things that they had gone through and feel a spiritual connection and a um, support from them just knowing that if they had made it through, I could make it through. Mm. And so that is, is, and the stories, you know, there are, um, there are so many, but if I tell you just a story, if I relate it to my family, when uh, my father had passed, uh, not my father had passed, I mean, he did pass away, but when he was young, his parents passed away um, from tuberculosis. This was in the 20, in 1920s. And he had two aunts, that raised him. So his mother was one of five sisters. So when I was looking back into their ancestry after my dad had passed, you know, I knew the story of him being raised by his great, um, by his aunts, my great aunts, but I didn't realize their story. And they had also been orphaned. And they had, when their father passed away and their mother was too sick and unable to care for them, all of them were put into orphanages. But when I looked back at that story and I see the resilience and how the eldest kept them all together, and I found them in New York City living in an apartment and thriving, and I never knew that story until after um, he had passed, my, gra my father had passed. So there's, there's so much in our ancestry that um, gives us a way of coming through healing. Mm. Wow. What a story. I'm very sorry for your loss. Alcoholism is such a creeper. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Because some people drink forever and then nothing. Mm -hmm. And then other people, it snatches you. Yes, absolutely. And it snatched them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there, you know, there it was so much, this really, his illness opened me up, um, opened me up to understanding um, the healing that I was already doing with my clients as I was taking them through their stories. And then as science, as, we, as I started to get further into the ancestral healing part of it, Ancestral trauma, science tells us, is now is passed down to us from our ancestors, and and what they're the way it's it, way that happens. It comes down genetically, as somebody is affected by a trauma. One of our ancestors is affected by a trauma. It changes the way their genes react, and that change in their genes is passed down to us, and so that. The way it shows up in us is um, that we may have an overreaction, um, we have a greater sense of anxiety or fears for things that um, we shouldn't be that anxious about or that fearful about. But that reaction, that that fear and anxiety reaction, has been has been passed down to us. And so as I take people back and show them what their ancestors went through, I'm able to help them understand the traumas and why they may be feeling some of the reactions that they are feeling because it was something that their ancestor had gone through. And I, I try and relate it to people that, you know, we were given the fear response to protect us. So for example, if we are in when you know a bear in the woods we were so if you come across a bear in the woods the fear reaction is there to know okay i have to save myself yeah but that but that fear reaction is and that's something that our ancestors would have experienced going through trauma and we sometimes experience that as we go through trauma in our lifetime but also sometimes that fear reaction and that trauma reaction comes up when it isn't a circumstance that needs that reaction mm. so that we will find ourselves just over anxious 
or fearful. Uh, and, you know, it shows up in, in the way we relate to people, in the way we, we um, share things in our lives and, uh, you know, the focus that we take on things. Um, my, I'm all Irish, so my ancestors were Irish um, famine they were they came from the irish famine and that left them with trauma of scarcity and and loss and that was passed down in my family and so people can often see that uh, the different types of things that are passed down and that is also part of um, the healing process and you know particularly when we are grieving because there's so many emotions that come up um, and that feeling of um, we are all alone and we can't make it through this deep grief. And when I take people back to the, you know, in their journey, it is a, a different way to help them understand their grief. Um, most people who are going through a deep grieving process will have therapy and do, which is what I did. But this is a different way of looking at it in a way that helps us um, truly understand um, that there's a, there's a path to walk through, through our grief and grow through. So. Wow. Do you ever talk about um, the experiments that have been done, like the cherry blossom or the... Um with the mice or the, the monkeys who like would get shocked every time they grab the top bananas. Do you ever? Uh, um, I have uh, some familiarity, but not any that I, that I've really studied to use in what I do, but there is, it's repeated, repeated, repeated causes yeah. those, causes those reactions. And, um, and that's what happens. And you see it, you know, you sometimes we see it in our families as um, patterns of behavior that are passed down, because it was so repeated and repeated. And if you have been burned by something, then you are telling the next generation, be careful, you may be burned, you may, you know, it, it just gets passed down. And we carry so much of that, that we end up living our lives, um, carrying wounds that aren't ours to carry. And when we understand what our ancestors have gone through, um, it, their resilience, I mean, we are an example of their resilience. We are, we came through. And so the fact that we are here living today means that they made it. And they, um, and so being able to look back and find the fun things about it. You know, there's, we, we find out, you know, where Uncle Larry's ears came from, or, you know, there's other things that we have that, you know, so it is, it, is, it can be a really uplifting path to take, um, to help us through, through the grieving process, which um, I've gone through. So I know how difficult it can be. Yeah, definitely. I, um, I so appreciate that. And yeah, the, um, one of my favorite, as far as explaining that was, I don't remember it exactly. So I'm going to ask the, uh, the listeners here to actually look it up, but it was a cherry blossom smell that would be put in the cages of like rats, I guess. And, uh, when the smell would come in, there would be a certain area of the cage or something that would shock them. And, um, the babies that were made, like were told not to go in that area when the cherry blossom thing came in. And then eventually they took the mothers and the grandfathers out and only had the babies and the baby still knew not to touch a certain area when the cherry blossom smell, even though there was nobody telling them. And then like two more generations of mice were like, they didn't know anything at all. And they took out the parents and then still without any reasoning, never touched like this certain area when the cherry blossom, they just automatically knew without anybody telling them anything with their little mouse senses, mm -hmm. mouse talk, um, about yeah. that area because of what you're saying. 
Yeah. Well, that you know, so the they started to look into the descendants of the Holocaust. I mean, and I know there have been other studies, but that is probably the largest study um, or the most um, the study that most people know about. And those traumas that were experienced by you know um, ancestors, you know, was passed down, and they were finding it in the grandchildren and the great grandchildren that these responses were there. So, and that's when, so it, it really genetically, they know it's called epigenetics. It's the science of epigenetics. Yes. Okay. And so that is where, um, where we see, uh, where we understand that those traumas are passed down, but that mm -hmm. when we know about it and we understand what our ancestors have gone through, uh, we can then move forward ourselves and, uh, you know, there's a saying, take, take what, take what you need. You know, you don't have to take everything, but, but understanding what, um, uh, what they have gone through can be so healing for you. It just, yeah. and you know, the other side of it, and this is something else when I, cause I often help people in the grieving uh, side that because of the, um, the, I've been, I'm trained in, in trauma and grief and have my certification in end of life doula. And so I know what those reactions are, grieving reactions and trauma reactions. And there's a spiritual side to our grieving where we start to realize that when we lose somebody that we don't lose contact with them mm. and that we can connect with the other side. And when we, and that's what happened to me when I was, it was my ancestors. I began to feel them and had several experiences where my ancestors came to me. Um, you know, one I can share with you, and some some of your audience may know this. It, it's um, called a. It, now I'm going to forget the name. I'll think for a second. But you have a dream where a, an ancestor comes to you, and it's a visitation. So it comes across like it's a dream. And I had, this was when David was very sick. My husband was very sick. And I was praying a lot. And my great aunt, who was a nun, Sister Lou, she was awesome. She was hilarious and a wonderful woman. But she came to me in my dream. And, and it was just the two of us. And she's holding my hands. And I didn't want to look at her. So I'm moving around and the room was like all gold and she grabs my hands and she makes me look straight at her. And she said, we hear your prayers. Mm. And, and then I woke up and it was this, you know, that was my, that was when I knew that they were there with me as I wasn't alone as he, as David was so sick and, and wasn't able to, to survive. They were with me. Um, and since he's passed, I mean, I connect with them, with my ancestors, with him, with uh, my, I'm one of eight children. And I say now that I get more attention from my parents now that they <laughs> passed <laughs> than wow. I did. Um, so there, there's this whole, there's so many um, parts to what I do that can support somebody who is experiencing grief or has experienced a lot of trauma and trying to understand it. Wow. Um, I'm just seeing, I'm really understanding how knowing this can be healing. I'd love to talk a little bit about actual transformations, actual mindset shifts that maybe you've had, or maybe you've seen other people have when they start to realize that the life that they're in or the lack or the limiting beliefs or the imposter syndrome is actually like set in them through, you know, a lineage that they really didn't have any control over. Do you have anything, any stories you could share? Yeah, that is, that's a great, well, you know, there are um, the way, well, there's two, I will use myself, but I'm going to start with somebody just so you realize how these, these things hold on for, 
I had somebody who came to me and she was 75 years old. And she said to me that um, there was a relationship between her father and her grandfather that she didn't understand. And that was very contempt, you know, like they just, um, it, it made her anxious. And she continued to hang, you know, um, carry this anxiety with her through her lifetime. Now she came to me, as I said, she was 75. Both her father and her grandfather had passed away years and years ago. But she just knew there was something there that she didn't understand. And so she, we, I told her that we can look back into your ancestry and sometimes you can see the cause of, you know, we can find the story and understand what, what was causing this, um, the, the dysfunction in their, in their relationship. And so I looked back and after a few, she had told me that she grew up, you know, gave me her background. She grew up in the Midwest. She, from a Christian family, she had, her dad had gone to Harvard. He was an academic and, um, you know, she just, you know, that was the life that she knew. And when we started to look back, I was very quickly able to discover something that I felt had um, could be at the center of it. And a few generations back, I discovered that her family name had been changed and that she was of Jewish ancestry. And she had no idea that she had come from Jewish ancestry. It came as a complete surprise. But what was, um, she felt some incredible emotion about it, but it was because she had always had an affinity and um, a love of the Jewish people, and she didn't know why. And mm. now she suddenly knew that this, um, this was there, and it brought a healing to her. Mm. She under, you know, we talked it through, and she understood why they may have changed the family name and why that secret was kept in the family. And here she, she to this day, she doesn't know whether her father knew. But there was something that um, her father knew something wasn't shared. You know, there was something that was kept. And knowing this secret, this family secret, opened her up to um, just a, a complete sense of healing in relationship to the family. And I think that is one way for people yeah. to know that um, when you discover things that um, you find about your past. I mean, some of it's emotions that have been passed down to you and why you are holding on to, as I said earlier, the scarcity. You know, for me, it was scarcity and loss um, because that's what your ancestors knew and, and um, that's what was passed down. But in discovering that, uh, for me, as I went through as I went through the loss of my husband and his, um, and his disease, I had been, I had lived my life as someone um, who was, codependency is often connected with um, people that have addiction, that somebody would be a codependent and helping them. And I was able to realize in my lifetime that I was, um, I was centered on giving and not caring for myself. I was centered on fixing and trying to help um, help everyone around me except for myself. Mm -hmm. And understanding, taking myself through this process and also being trained in grief and trauma, I began to realize that what I was carrying was limiting me from being able to move forward. And that this has really been a gift for me to open up and understand the healing that I can offer people because of not only the knowledge that I have and the training that I have, but also my personal experience has, has added to that and brings an authenticity to the process that um, I use as I help people understand um, where they came from and who they are. Wow. Wow. So, so impactful. I know that you are a end of life doula. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. How, I, I'm really, after, after hearing this, 
when I first read your intro, I was like, how is that related? I don't get it. But I am understanding now that mm -hmm. finding that out, even if it's late in life, could be so beneficial when somebody is heading out. Can you talk yeah. about that? Well, it is beneficial. Oh, my goodness. It's beneficial in so many ways. Um, but yes, heading out, one it, it, end of life doula, what what you are trained in. And I a lot of this was work I had already done. I'd worked with with as an elder care manager. So I have helped families kind of plan out the, those end of um, life decisions and caring and things like that. Um, it is it is helping um, helping somebody understand that our our um, passing is is uh, something not to be feared and helps them understand what what end of life looks like and what it feels like and all of the um, emotions that people go through and also the um, the physical, you know, the physical things that they grow, go through. And this is for families as well as for, um, you know, the families of somebody that is passing as well as the person that is passing. And often in an end of life dual situation, you will do some work on a legacy and helping them under helping the person that's passing leave a story to the family and to those that come um you know the generations to continue to come uh, so that is you know is one way but in that process the the healing we people who are who are getting close they see in themselves what they've carried the traumas that they've carried and, yeah and they are able to um they're they're able to heal and uh, I help people understand that whatever they're feeling and whatever they're still holding on to, as they cross, that that will that will lift, that mm. will, and so it is. It helps them transition, and it helps the family who's staying here also in that process, and it helps you understand or me understand. I was able to understand my parents and my grandparents, my great aunts and uncles, I was able to understand them and their uh, behaviors because of the stories that I discovered and the uh, trauma and the resilience and how all of those things are all connected. But it, it, it is, um, it is an incredibly special time to be with not only the person who is getting ready to cross, but the family as they begin to understand um, it. It is it is a beautiful transition. Um, I'm about to welcome a brand new granddaughter in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, she's coming, and I think about it. It is so beautiful to bring in a new life, but it is equally beautiful when someone at the end of their life and they're they're tired and they're ready and and even if they're younger and it is a sadder and harder passing um there comes a calmness when they know that the crossing is um they are greeted by family they are greeted um spiritually and that um they're going back to be um the spiritual being that we still are here, but in that, um, on the other side. Wow. I'm loving all of the stories. Um, I love all the feel goods. Uh, I would love to kind of, as we're wrapping up here, know a little bit about the structure, the organization, the how to, um, how is this, I mean, I'm assuming this isn't just coming through to you somehow. I'm assuming there's research, there's places right. that you go, there's books, there's ho hospital records. W what does this look like? How do you do your work in order to uh, help these individuals find their ancestors? What's some of the things? Um, there, yeah, it is. That's where the genealogy comes in. 
So you look back and I'm able to discover through all of the records that are now, and a lot of people have heard of Ancestry.com. I use Ancestry.com. I'm trained in other ways of researching, but um, there, so you look for your ancestors and we put them on a tree to, to hold it on a tree, meaning some they used to do paper trees, but now we put them on, you know, you put them online so you can add all the stories that you discover. So, for example, a story that may, um, uh, you can find out, I will, I'll give you a quick example. So in the, um, the 1900 census, they would be do, asking women um, in the household, how many children did you have and how many children are still living? And you can see in discovering that you might find the story that there was great loss in that family because they lived through, well, as I said, my great, my grandparents both died of tuberculosis, leaving their children um, orphaned. So, I mean, you, and there's, uh, you can find census records and you can find death records and birth records and all of that puts to get puts the family together so you can be, begin to date them back and take them back as far as those records will give you and it's my gift one of the gifts is being able to pull the stories out i do have a spirit connection um that where i will have ancestors that come uh, to me and guide me in the process Wow. I often feel, yeah, I often feel connected with them and will know which um, branch of the tree someone is more connected to because those ancestors are, are um, allowing me to know. They're, I will feel their energy in me and sometimes hear from them. Or, or wow. uh, yeah, so there, there definitely is a strong spirit connection that I, I have. Um, so it's kind of, all, you know, it's all together. As this grew, you know, you were talking, uh, I think we were talking earlier about how COVID changed the way we, uh, as business, you know, is, and it changed what I was doing as well. And it was coming on the heels of David's death and changing what I was doing, uh, just deciding that this healing that was happening and the genealogy was coming up as a bigger part of my life and that there was a way to help people move forward. And while that was happening, as his passing, that's when the ancestors were coming in stronger to me and that spiritual side of me opened up more. And I truly now, we kind of work together. And as I work on a family, I feel a part of that family while I'm doing that work. And it's helpful for the person um, I'm helping because they can then feel the healing themselves. They can feel those stories. And yeah, yeah it's kind of, it's transformational when I take somebody through the process, it, it truly is. But it starts, some people have already done their ancestry and have a lot of information. Um, and so that looks a little different because it's more of digging into what they've already found and I'm looking for the, the, those stories to help them understand how to put it all together wow. and understand and see what those traumas were because I understand that part of the, um, that part of you know this scientific part of what they went through wow that's awesome i took a ton of notes here this is really really amazing and i feel like this is the next level in healing i've talked to so many people on this podcast you know mental health emotional health the healing process trauma i feel like this is this is the 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 cherry on top of all of that, mm -hmm. as far as another thing that's necessary in the correct order, right? right? We're not trying to overload people here. Um, but right. this is right. awesome. This is so awesome. And I am lining this up just gorgeously in my head as far as um, the process of what this would look like for somebody. As far as those listening live, those listening on the replay, can you tell us, um, you know, who should be reaching out to you? What exactly do you provide for them? Um, you know, who do you help? 
So it is because of the grief that I've gone through. I, it is women who are grieving is a, is a large part of the, of the uh, people that I help. You know, they are, um, you know, we tend to hold on it on to the grief and because we're, especially if we have families, because we're grieving for the, you know, for the whole family. And so it is, and it, ta- it is taking somebody who, um, who has maybe tried other things and is still struggling with moving forward. Because as you said, there's so many wonderful modalities out there to help us in the healing process. What I love about this is that it is, um, there are some concrete things that people can understand that can help them. So if they're not, if they're not feeling that spiritual connection, I can help them begin giving them ideas on how to connect with their loved ones, uh, you know, that have crossed over. But in the meantime, giving them this really concrete understanding of what the, the traumas and what they what others in their family have gone through and how that resilience can help us walk it's a path that's laid out for us it is it's breadcrumbs and you know everybody deals with their grief differently no one grieves the same way no and 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 it's not something you know i was recently talking to somebody we really grow through our grief you know, people want to say, do you know, do you just live with it for the rest of your life? And it is something that will stay with us. But we grow through it as we start to allow ourselves to expand and know that there's more for us, even if, you know, you can be 80 years old and have lost your life partner and still have an opening, a way to open up to more. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Um, so I would say, you know, it, my website is tellmeourstory.com. And there I, I help people on the ancestral healing part of it, if that's what's really drawing them in. And if somebody is just looking for the help with the um, the grieving and how do I move forward and how maybe do I connect with my um, those who have passed? I I can help them on both or do help them together and you know put them together as a um, as one big path to you know kind of combining them. So gorgeous, yeah, that's awesome. Well, um, this has been delightful. I so appreciate you hanging out with us. As far as social media, do you hang out in any certain platform where people can follow you? Yes, I'm on Facebook. I am on Instagram. I am on uh, LinkedIn. I'm on X. So I'm kind of, I'm just about everywhere that uh, somebody would, and I have that on my, um, on my website. Oh, I'm on YouTube. So I do have some videos on YouTube. Um, so it, it tell me our story and it's from the point of view. Cause sometimes just, it's from the point of view of the child asking the parent, tell me our story. Ooh. So that's where, yeah, that's where it came from. I love that. And I'm so glad you added that in because I was actually going to ask you that offline. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, that just adds a whole nother layer. Yeah. It's so it's, we are all trying to heal in our lives. All of us. I don't, there's probably isn't one person listening to this who hasn't had trauma or grief walk there, you know? And so, and I think the world is just wanting to open, you know, all of these healing are just modalities are just helping all of us move to a different level. Wow. Love it. Well, this has been an absolute delight to those of you listening live and really resonating with Bernadette and all of the amazingness that she just shared today. Make sure to follow her. She predominantly hangs out on Facebook and Instagram. Her website is tellmeourstory.com. It isn't a clickable link in the description uh, down below wherever you are watching us at. Bernadette, any closing thoughts as we wrap up? You know, the only closing thought is um, know that I I understand. I 
feel the the um, emotion and the the grief that so many of us carry. And I just want them to know that there are ways to lift it. You know, there it is. Um, we all want to keep putting one foot in front of the other and that this is a beautiful way to do it, knowing that your family, your spiritual family is with you on your path. Beautiful. I love it. That brings us to an end of yet another incredible episode of her talk show. Thank you, Bernadette, for joining us and sharing your wisdom. To our dedicated listeners, thank you for staying with us until the very end here. Remember to follow, like, and share. Once again, I am your host, Sabrina Victoria, and I invite you to join our amazing community, Her Nation, where we continue to have uplifting and inspiring conversations like this to help you every step of the way.